nothing but illustrious guests tonight on our stage. Who are we bringing to the floor right Ooh. now, Miro? The inimitable, the mm -hmm. incredible, the egregiously talented Bronx is on Stephen <laughs> A. Smith, ladies and gentlemen. Make some, make some noise. You know what I'm saying? What's going on, fellas? The What's meme guy, on, the legendary voice, the man himself, Stephen. Welcome <laughs> to our show. Listen, man, thank you, you. you know we're Thanks big fans. Me. Well, big fan, Appreciate sometimes you. we roast you on here, but it's nothing but respect. Right. How you doing, my man? I'm good, man. How y'all doing, man? Congratulations on the success of y'all show and a whole bit. I was looking forward to being on here, man. It's good to see y'all. Thank Appreciate you, Steve. That means a lot, man. Because, like, listen, we're, we're trying to follow your footsteps. You have blazed trails in broadcasting, and you've done it your way. What advice could you give us? Because you have come in and you've set a tone that, yo, Stephen A. Smith does things Stephen A. Smith's way, and it has paid off for you. So, like. How have you been able to stay true to who you are from day one? Well, you know, the people that you surround yourself with, I mean, when you grow up with the kind of cats that I grew up with, whether it be family members, friends, loved ones, and things of that nature, and uh, they know who you are and, more importantly, who you're supposed to be because you got to be real, true, and authentic to yourself. If you deviate from that, they're going to be the first to call you on it. You know, I'm from Hollis, Queens, so I'm always back in the neighborhood. Um, you know, my family, my sister still live in Queens, New York, so I'm always there. Uh, the cats that I grew up with in Hollis, we still friends to this day. We Zoom each other, you know, at least once or twice a month, the college buddies that I that I have. You got that kind of balance and you surrounded by that. And plus, you remember how you got to where you are by re being real, true and authentic to yourself. I didn't have uh, any quote unquote journalism training per se. I majored in mass communications from Winston Salem State University in North Carolina. But when you talk about journalism schools like Missouri and Columbia and all of that other stuff, did I have that kind of background? No. So all I knew how to do was write, report. And then when I had to disseminate that information, uh, I had to be true to myself and it paid off. I don't know how the hell it did, uh, but I <laughs> knew that I was going to be me come hella high water. And it ended up working out for me. So now, a real big question, because this is this is major. You are a celebrity on both sides, because you're a celebrity on TV. You people look to you for for sports takes, but then on the internet side, you the king of memes. There's like a reaction. <laughs> there's a there's a Stephen yeah, A. reaction know. for everything. Yeah, like I've i yeah. personally I've used the. Let me tell you something. We don't care. I'm here to tell you right now. We don't care. Let me tell you. Right. <laughs> we don't care. <laughs> many, many times in response right. to tweets. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, so, Listen, I, man, I gotta tell you, I gotta tell you, shockingly, man, I don't I don't see a lot of the memes about myself. I mean, people are always telling me about it. Don't get me wrong, I catch a few. Right. I ain't trying to front like that. But what I'm saying is I don't really pay attention to it because I think what people don't realize is that when you do a daily grind, mm -hmm. they they look at me and they see first take or they see sports center or they'll hear me on radio or whatever they don't realize i've had to do it all so it's rare that i have a day off yeah. and as a result of that uh, like I, I miss a lot of stuff because when people say did you see that about you i remember when jay farrow impersonated me on saturday night live i didn't know for like three weeks chris borsh and i are like soulmates <laughs> we have showered together <laughs> we have fed each other seedless fruits for more times than i can remember but in the fourth quarter, Chris Barr should be nowhere near the basketball. Uh, you know, I'm like, really? He did that? I'm like, Let me call Jay and this crazy ass stuff. You know, I didn't know. But, you know, cats told me and stuff like that. So a lot of times I'm late to the party in that regard where I I'm not, I'm just moving forward. It's on to the next item, next subject, next show, stuff like that. And then somebody will say, yo, man, I need you to check this out. Not realizing that they didn't believe me when I say, really, I didn't know. But I really don't care either. It's all it's it's all a part of it, man. I'm in the public eye. I'm on TV, uh, spitting my truth every single day. How the hell am I gonna get on somebody for for getting on me in any way? I remember I was cool. You know, I'm cool with Charlemagne the God, and he had me as the donkey of the day. I don't know Stop about 10, 15 times, and they actually <laughs> thought that I hated the guy for it. I like you could be further from the truth. That's a part of his show. If he thought I deserved to be the donkey, so be it. That's life. That's what it is. You gotta roll with the punches. Oh, okay, right. listen, you got every sports fan's dream job. Like, how, like, does it still does it still excite you to wake up every morning and be like, yo, I'm gonna go down there, I'm gonna sit down with my homeboy, and we're just gonna like discuss, you know, the day well, in sports and what's it, going it, on. It, it depends on how you look at it, man. I mean, obviously, I love what I do for my career. Now, obviously, at times you get a little bit tired because I beat people down. We know we, you know, I mean, you try to go up against me in a debate format. Oh, yeah, my no, attitude no, no. is yeah, my yeah, attitude yeah. is my attitude we, is I'm gonna roll right over you. 
So yeah. the victims that, I, that okay. lie in my way, you know what I'm saying? I'm <laughs> We've like, seen the Phil Jackson side of the episode. They, they, you know what I'm saying? They don't, want, the they, they, don't want, they, they don't want none of this. So I have fun with it sometimes. But for the most part, I absolutely love my career. But I know where it came from. I started off at the New York Daily News. I wrote for the Philadelphia Inquirer for 17 years. You know, I was an intern living off the tuna fish and Kool-Aid in Ar Ar Archdale, North Carolina. Mm. I mean, I paid dues to get here, man. And so as a result, there's a level of appreciation that I have for being where I'm at. And it's more so about that. The grind is the grind, but the grind has never affected me. I usually leave it for other people to celebrate. My attitude is do well show some respect, earn respect, mm -hmm. and get paid. Always, mm -hmm. always get paid whenever you can. I'm about that, too. You know what I'm saying? And also, stay off the weed. It's a, yeah, okay. for cats that for cats that allowing it to cost them money, hell yeah. Stay <laughs> off the weed. Hey, there you go. It's the signature line yeah. right there. Yes. Steven, yes. what are your thoughts on, uh, you know, the, the NBA is back. We saw it last night. What are your thoughts about the W uh, about the N NBA? How they've been handling the bubble situation? Because we're seeing like MLB is a mess over right now. Like, I, 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 well, I, I think the MLB season is going to end up getting canceled because yeah. you got a, a couple of cats, a few cats over there, the players being uh, specific, that really didn't want to have anything to do with the bubble. And I think that's unrealistic in this day and age, considering the fact that there's no vaccine, uh, that we don't know when we're going to get a vaccine. There's no, there's not even any therapeutic treatment to sort of alleviate the symptoms that might come your way. Uh, for me, it's just foolish for any athlete uh, to believe that they can operate any professional sports league that is to operate thinking that they will be able to do it devoid of a bubble. That's just not smart. The NBA, uh, Commissioner Adam Silver, in concert with Chris Paul, the president of the Players Association, and uh, Michelle Roberts, the executive director of the Players Association, we got to give them major, major props along with all of all the players, mm -hmm. uh, LeBron, Kawhi, and Russell Westbrook, James Harden, all of these cats. They deserve all our respect, all the credit in the world because they've gotten in the bubble. They've isolated themselves pretty much from the rest of the world, which includes their family and loved ones. And you got to remember, the more success you have, the longer you'll be in the bubble. Now, yeah. after a month or so, you'll be able to get people in because some teams will be going home. All right. And for all we know, some teams might want to go home on purpose because they don't want to be stuck in the bubble. But in the end, what it comes down to in all seriousness is that they deserve a lot of credit, man, because they're making that sacrifice. But it was also smart. And I think that y'all can appreciate that because that's one of the reasons I took some heat on, on Twitter when cats like Kyrie Irving and Dwight Howard, good brothers, by the way, were talking about we wanted to concentrate on social justice issues. My point was, wait a minute, you need to do both, not sacrifice the rest of the season. Because had they not gone back to play, fellas, then the NBA would have had the license to reopen the collective bargaining agreement with their doomsday clause. You rip up the old collective bargaining agreement. You call them back to the table. You say, these are the billions we've accrued in losses. These are the billions we anticipate accruing the losses. As a result, we want you to take your fair share hit, and it would have cost them billions, okay? Plus, they would have tried to institute a hard salary cap. I'm telling you what I know based on what owners told me. If they had to rip up the collective bargaining agreement and reopen those talks, they were going to go for instituting a hard salary cap similar to the NFL if the NBA season had not resumed. So I'm saying I understand your heart is in the right place from a social justice perspective, but I've never seen a movement involving black people that didn't involve black economic empowerment. And if, if there's anybody that's black that's economically empowered, it's NBA players. You don't give up that kind of leverage because you've been asked to play two months in a, bu in a bubble in Orlando, Florida. You suck it up and you do what you got to do. It's fair. your paper. It's fair. Yo, what about, um, well, how do you feel about the Knicks pick for a new coach? You feel it makes a difference or? Well, for, well first of all, there's nowhere to go but up. New York True. Knicks suck. We know this. Uh, they <laughs> suck for a long time. Uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, what, what the, the misery that they done, you brothers from the Bronx are from Queens. Born in the Bronx, by the way, but raised in Queens. I cannot tell you uh, how disgusted I've been with the New York Knicks for so many years. But Tom Thibodeau can coach. Uh, mm -hmm. He did a damn good job in Chicago. He did a decent job in Minnesota. Uh, he's got to work on his player relations because he is tough as nails. He lives, eats, and breathes basketball. And sometimes you got to know when to let up with the modern-day play. You can't come at them too hard once they're making these millions and engaging themselves in social media and beyond. They ain't trying to hear you some days. You got to know that and work your way and navigate through that terrain. 
But ultimately, the man has won 59% of his games. Uh, he's been in the playoffs for the vast majority of his coaching career. He was an elite assistant coach. He's well-respected and considered an elite defensive mind, and he knows how to develop players. So it's going to be up to Leon Rose, William Wesley, and others to make sure that they're able to help recruit the kind of talent and make sure that Tom Thibodeau's old personality doesn't invade the proceedings so you alienate potential new talent that might be willing to come to New York City. You got to play that political game to some degree to make sure that you buffer this roster because, again, the New York Knicks have sucked for quite some time. And I'm <laughs> tired of seeing them sticking <laughs> up the joint. So it, there's nowhere to go but up. I got faith in them, and I'm wishing them well, and I'll be rooting for them. Listen, I'm going to ask you a question. I might get you hot water. A lot of time in New York, a lot of time in Philly. Best sports city out of those two. Well, what I would tell you is it's going to be Philly, even though I'm a native New Yorker. And the reason why I'm going to tell you it's, new, it's Philly is because they've had more to cheer about than New Yorkers have. Therefore, there's more evidence. I mean, if you really, really think about it, we've had to deal with Eli Manning over the last several years, even though he's a two-time Super Bowl champion. Uh, the, the Giants missed the playoffs six of the next seven years or so, or seven of the last, next eight. Don't get me started in the damn New York Jets. All you need to know about the New York Jets is that Joe Namath is still relevant, okay? Yeah. Then you sit up there. Uh, we ain't paying too much attention to hockey, all right? Then we go to the basketball route. They, the New York Knicks have been so bad. New Yorkers said, the hell with it. Let's put a team off Atlantic Avenue in Brooklyn, New York. But yeah. hell with it. Let's try something new because we gave them enough. Let's put it by the Navy, y'all. Exactly. Yes. exactly. <laughs> meanwhile, meanwhile, Phillies won a World Series in 2008. Uh, the Eagles won a Super Bowl. Was it 2016 or so? Something like that. Uh, you know, you know the, the, the Flyers have been relevant. Obviously, the Philadelphia 76ers, AI, those great years he gave you before, and now you got Embiid and Simmons and those boys there. So Philadelphia has had more to cheer about, but more importantly, they've had a complex because people have looked at them as second class compared to the New Yorkers or whatever. So as a result, it really elevates their level, you know, that rabid fan base that they have, and they're far more interested. I'm not saying that New Yorkers wouldn't be like that, but damn it, we ain't had no evidence to prove that as of yet. So at this particular moment in time, New York is, is sandwiched by Philadelphia and Boston. And I think both cities are better sports town by virtue of the fact that they've got organizations that, that have given their fan base a better product to cheer for. Ah, that's true. That is true. <laughs> Steven, you think LeBron's going to do it this year? You think he's pulling it off? You know what? You I'm said nervous. he was in trouble. I, 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 I said you I, tweeted I, I, that. I, I, he, he, I'm, 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 I'm nervous because here's the thing. I picked the Lakers to win at the beginning of the season. The Clippers clearly are the best team. They're clearly the better team. There is no question about that. But my position is, is that when you got two of the top five players on the planet in LeBron and AD, you can overcome a lot. There were times we looked at the Chicago Bulls and we thought a team may have been better. Whether it was, it was Portland or Phoenix or Seattle or Utah, we thought somebody might be better. They didn't have MJ. My attitude is, I don't give a damn Kawhi is great. He's a two-time champion, two-time NBA Finals MVP. But to me, he ain't LeBron. Not when it really, really counts. And so for me, I want to give the Lakers the edge. The problem is you got LeBron and AD on the open of Thursday night, and the Clippers don't have Montrell's Harold. They don't have Lou Williams, all right? And still, it takes you coming down to the wire in order mm -hmm. to beat them. That makes yeah. me nervous, not to mention Paul George is healthy now. And we keep forgetting this brother Paul George is a star. He might not be LeBron, but he is a star in the NBA that can drop 30 on you per night. Mm -hmm. Steve, Stephen, I'm going to be your max right now. That fight, the fight. Well, you, you know what that means? You know that's an automatic L. Right? <laughs> that's an automatic L. Right? That means you got to take an L. That's right. That's an automatic L for Listen, you right there. You've seen the right. last, the closing moments of that game, though. LeBron turned yeah. into LeBron. He was like, well, Mr. I, ben got his own rebound. But for that's what I'm saying. You know what I mean? That's what Clamp, I get where you're coming from. But here's, but, yeah, but here's the problem. It was required without Lou Williams and Montrell's Harrell. That's yeah. the problem. And then you got to take into account this too. Avery Bradley, elite on-ball defender. And can hit some threes for you. He elects not to participate in these games because he's got a six-year-old that had respiratory issues and he didn't mm -hmm. want to go to the bubble and therefore risk endangering his kid. Yeah. I hope he changes his mind because he changes his mind to come back, but I doubt that's going to be the case. Rajon Rondo goes down, so he's hurt. All right, so what happens there? Even though he's anticipated to be back, you're talking about a load that's going to be placed on the shoulders 
of LeBron James. And let's not forget, last time we checked, the Houston Rockets was around the fourth or the fifth, or fifth seed. If the Lakers are the number one seed, then it's entirely plausible that they face Houston before they get a chance to look at the Clippers in a conference final. And I got news for you. Y'all can sleep on James Harden and Russell Westbrook all you want to, but I'm not. I'm not at all. You can't underestimate them, brothers. You like the Harden, the triple, the triple step back three? That's he, he, <laughs> listen, he, he's one of, he is one of the greatest scorers this game has ever seen. I mean, he's just a magician. He can hurt you from threes. He can get to the basket. He can pull up mid-range. He goes to the free throw lines more than 10 times per game over the last six years and counting. And, oh, by the way, he has 85% of his free throws once he gets there. James Harden's the real deal, bro. And, oh, by the way, Russell Westbrook, all you got to do is ask him not to shoot threes. He can do everything else, everything That's else. True. He That's gets true. to the hole. He's unstoppable. He's averaging 28 a game. He can hit pull up perimeter mid-range jump shot. He's virtually unstoppable during the break. He can hit free throws. He can defend. And we all know that brother got nothing but heart. If nothing mm -hmm. else, he got heart. And we yeah. know he's not limited to just heart. But he got that, too. I would not sleep on Houston at all in the Western Conference. Obviously, Milwaukee's in the East. That's the team to beat in the East. Let me change my little betting arrangement here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Steven, this has been a great interview. We know you're a busy man. We're going to let you go. Continue your day. We want to thank you for being on our show. It's been a long Yo, time appreciate coming. appreciate you, bro. Yo, no everyone doubt, on our show is an illustrious guest. What would you like your neon sign to say? My neon sign? In today's day and age, vote. How about vote. that? That's vote. important That's right there. Listen That's to Stephen vote. A. All right? Vote. vote. All the best Stay off that weed. Man. All right? Off the weed. Yo, give it up for our guy, Stephen yeah. S. Smith. The ex-boss right, of Queens. Keep doing your thing, man. In the house. Uh, <laughs> my guy.